The heroes of today are known by most of us fans, but how about the heroes of the past? Who the heck are those guys? A lot of people know the Phoenix Force, but not as many know about the Enigma Force. The Enigma Force is another source of cosmic power, but this one was basically crafted to be the opposite of the darkness in the cosmos, which was made manifest by the god of darkness, the king in black, ruler and god of all symbiotes, No, This entity is so old, it is believed to have come into existence around the same time as the universe, having been around since Null first also came into being. You might recognize this entity more as the hero, Captain Universe from Marvel Comics, but even then, I feel like Captain Planet is still more easily recognizable than Captain Universe would be. When I say Captain, I mean, who first comes to your mind? For me, it's definitely Captain Planet. Or maybe Captain America? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. The Enigma Force is somewhat different than the Phoenix Force in the sense that it typically takes hold of a host for a shorter period of time, instead choosing to merge with a being simply for the purpose of handling a single universal threat, and then usually leaving that host after the crisis has been averted. Up next, we're moving from the cosmic to the supernatural. I Vampire is Andrew Bennett. Andrew Bennett hails from DC Comics, and he is considered obscure or niche enough that if you actually just Google his name, Andrew Bennett, without anything else in that search field, this man comes up instead of this man. Who is Andrew Bennett? He's not that other guy, I'll tell you that much. He is basically a vampire who is a superhero. If you're familiar with the Anne Rice Vampire Chronicles, the novels, you could think of him as a superhero version of Lestat, basically. That's kind of what he is. Sometimes he teams up with other heroes to take on threats, but he also has a lot of his own vampire politics to deal with most of the time. Life ain't easy being a vampire. <laughs> Now, while some people aren't as maybe Googleable, Artemis is possibly the most well known of these least well known characters on our list. But at the same time, there are probably still a ton of folks out there who really only know Wonder Woman and maybe her mother Hippolyta when it comes to the Wonder Woman mythos and family, the Amazons. Artemis is not a family member per se, but she is one of the Amazons of Themyscira. For a while, she even took up the mantle of Wonder Woman herself. She's used that alias before. She has been a long standing rival to Wonder Woman, and although she tends to have a more brutal approach that sometimes makes her more of an antagonist in stories, she currently is more of a hero or anti-hero at the time of this recording in the comics. The Darkness is something completely different. This character is not from either Marvel or DC Comics, but instead is from the pages of Top Cow. Top Cow Productions is Mark Silvestri's baby. It's an imprint of Image Comics. It has its own universe and its own line, with tons of newer and older comics in terms of the different series that it carries. There is A Man Among Ye and Sunstone, so some of the newer stuff, and also Witchblade and Cyberforce some of the older stuff. Like Cyberforce and Witchblade, The Darkness is also an older series and an older character, both in terms of comic book history and in terms of canon history. If you've heard of Witchblade, The Darkness is another character that very much is based in that world. The Darkness and Witchblade go together like peanut butter and jelly. Like the Witchblade, The Darkness is an entity that takes a host and is passed down through the generations. As such, it's supremely ancient, with its most well-known host in the comics being Jackie Estacado in the historical modern Modern era, but if you want a really metal darkness story, you can actually head all the way back to the days of ancient Rome or even the Vikings to see what the darkness was up to in the comics. Because yeah, there was a darkness at those times too. Darkness in general is pretty metal, I feel like. Zealot is another character that is more outside of the mainstream when it comes to comics, which is honestly where I like to go for lists like this. Never before seen being interpreted often for me as, you know, not one of the greatest superheroes of the big two. That is the big two publishers of DC Comics and Marvel, just so you know what I'm talking about when I say that. That being said, Zealot is technically from DC Comics at this point in time, but not originally. Originally, she actually hailed from the indie publisher known as Wildstorm. That was Jim Lee's comic publishing baby that he made when he got tired of larger publishers keeping all the rights for everything that their creatives had ever made for themselves. However, DC later would actually offer to buy Wildstorm and Lee would agree. So now Wildstorm is a DC imprint and universe. So. Back into the big two it goes. And Jim Lee, of course, is pretty permanently back with DC Comics and has been for some time now. Zealot is an original member of Wildcats and is actually currently serving on the Birds of Prey team in the comics. Kind of fun. Zealot is Xana, an alien from the planet Kara who has lived for thousands of years. So, she really old. She ancient. 
Not all mutants are from the modern day. Take a look at this next hero. Exodus is a super, super old mutant from Marvel Comics. For most of his life, he was in a stasis, so that's probably why you didn't see him around throughout all of history. Initially, Exodus was more of a villain in the comics, at least somewhat, and I'm sure he'll go back to being a villain at some point again. But during the Krakoan period of X-Men, there haven't actually been a ton of true mutant villains. This is because all the mutants decided to band together as one nation, working together for the greater good of mutant kind, all part of Krakoa or Arako, as opposed to fighting against one another. So save for a few, most mutants, even the ones that are villainous normally, have been acting as heroes. If you're wondering how old Exodus is, he was around during the 12th century and actually fought in the Crusades, being known then as the noble Grand Duke Bene du Paris. During his travels, he ran into Apocalypse and was chosen to become his champion. And even back then, Exodus had kind of a sense of heroic valiance about him. When Apocalypse attempted to pit Exodus against his friend, another ancient Marvel hero, Hero, the Black Knight, you may have heard of him, Exodus refused to fight him and instead turned on Apocalypse. Back again to the Wonder Woman mythos. Nubia is another character that is not well known from that, I would say, group of heroes. And what's even more surprising to me is that I actually thought Artemis might be lesser known than Nubia, but it turns out that Artemis is likely even more well known considering that she's actually made overall more comic book appearances. Whereas Nubia, despite being a literal, sometimes Times sister to Wonder Woman, depending on her origin story, and more recently, Queen of the Amazons has not appeared as often, which surprises me, but here we are. Nubia, like Wonder Woman and Artemis, is also considered to be ancient. Her current origin in the Prime Earth continuity had her as an ancient princess who was actually reborn from the Well of Souls after her death, becoming the Amazonian warrior Nubia. Nubia was the last to actually be born from the Well of Souls and was born around the same time as Diana in the the current main continuity. So in that version of the story, they grow up together and that kind of gives them that sisterly bond. The next one might surprise a lot of folks out there. Who is Angela? Well, although she originated in the pages of Images Spawn, she is actually now Thor's long lost sister. Wait, what? Okay, so here's the story. Angela was initially a Hellspawn hunter from the pages of Spawn comics. While Spawn technically gets his powers from Hell, Angela kind of works on behalf of Heaven in the war against Heaven and Hell. So that's kind of how that goes. And as such, she therefore hunts down people like Spawn. Hellspawn, that is. She was created by Neil Gaiman and Todd McFarlane. But there was an issue with that. The issue of who really owned this character? Who had those creating rights? While Gaiman had made her for Spawn while working for Todd, McFarlane later claimed to own the rights solely to her character. And that's where uh, things got rough between these two. The two entered a legal battle with Gaiman fighting to prove that he actually also had rights to Angela as a co-creator. The court sided with him and money also had to be determined for how much Gaiman was like owed based on how much money had been made by the use of this character character that he co-created. During this time, Gaiman decided to bring Angela over to Marvel and even wrote 1602 for Marvel Comics just to help cover his legal costs. He actually dedicated 1602 to Todd and I quote for making it necessary. Angela, when she came over to Marvel, ended up after 1602 being incorporated into the main continuity where she became the long lost angelic sister of the god and superhero Thor. Up next, Shining Knight is a hero I didn't even know about before writing this uh, this video for you guys. I love when I learn something new and then I get to share it with you all, whether that's something I've read or something I found through my own research. It honestly feels really special to me to share stuff like that with you. Shining Knight is basically like what would happen if Captain America was a medieval knight instead of like a World War II super soldier war hero. Shining Knight hails from DC Comics though. He's not from Marvel, just to be clear. He was initially a hero in the sixth century who was frozen for centuries before emerging once more in what we'd consider to be Captain America's original era, actually, the 1940s. During his time as a hero in the 1940s, he was known as a member of the All-Star Squadron and the Seven Soldiers of Victory. So yeah, like I said, basically Captain America, but like what if he was a medieval knight? I love it. Finally, we have Egamoto. For those who are unfamiliar, Egamoto is the Sorcerer Supreme, or he was a 
Sorcerer Supreme, anyways. While he has acted as an antagonist to the current Sorcerer Supreme, Stephen Strange, in the past, initially Agamotto himself was a protector of Earth and a hero, way, way back in the past. He even served on the Avengers, or rather, the prehistoric Avengers, that is, the Avengers of 1 million BCE. That's about it. I've been your host, Amanda McKnight, and until next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube. Bye.